first of all, note the gap in my teeth. These are now fake. I have fake teeth. This is me when I was, I don't know how old I was. I must have been, I don't know, 10 or 11, 12 maybe. And I was holding my baby cousin. I had a really beautiful, simple upbringing. We had a community theater called Matthew's Playhouse. And um, my first role, I was in the third grade and I played Pink Rabbit in Winnie the Pooh, which was one of Rabbit's nieces. And then I played Buddy Holly in a school play and I did a few up until high school and then in high school I actually stopped. I didn't, I didn't see it as a career path because it wasn't an example for me and so it was kind of a hobby. Ooh, I would tell myself to continue to do what brings you joy. I would say stick to the school play so that you can make your mistakes there and not on a big screen in a movie with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. You don't want to make your beginner mistakes there. Oh, oh my gosh. I love Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Yes, I was at a premiere with Jen and Adam and my God, that whole phase of my life, what a whirlwind. Name something that makes you sad. That NSYNC broke up. Uh, yeah, that was rough on all of us. It was my first movie. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I think my regret at that time is that I, I did make so many like rookie mistakes on such a huge stage with the two of them, but I couldn't have asked for better coworkers and, and people to be around there. I mean, they're, they're wonderful. They're, they're wonderful. I like, I'm obsessed with both of them and still starstruck, it's, uh, it's annoying. It was terrifying, I, I, I was terrified. I mean, even now, I, I think when I look back, I wish I had let myself play a little bit more. I am such a rule follower that I think I was a little scared to play and I wish I would have played with them a little bit more. Because of my modeling background, I sort of felt like I just wanted to make people happy and do what they told me to do. And the two of them really showed me, like, you can take ownership over what you're putting out. And, and I think that's a really powerful lesson. Oh, this picture. So I think that this was actually a Polaroid of me taken in New York when I was 18 and had just moved there to start modeling. An agent in New York scouted me in North Carolina and I went to New York for the first time on my 16th birthday. And the rest is history. But I have sort of this like mousy dishwater color hair. My modeling agents were like, are you gonna be a blonde or a brunette? And this I feel like was shortly after I had my hair sort of highlighted for the first time in my life. They found a tick in my scalp, which is like the most North Carolina thing ever. I go to New York, I'm like this new model, I go to this fancy hair salon and they find a tick. They literally said like, do you live in the woods? I think people think I had a wildly successful modeling career and it's solely because of Sports Illustrated and the opportunity they afforded me. Otherwise, like I never walked a runway. They published your name with your photograph and they gave you a profile. They wrote your name, they said where you were from, they wrote your hobbies, they did an interview. I mean, they really personalized the models, which seems so natural to us now because we know all the names of everyone and that's sort of par for the course, but at the time it was not. As a 33-year-old woman now, I wish, I would tell myself at this age, don't be afraid to say no. The business wasn't as healthy as it is now, and I think you could get yourself into hairy situations at work that were like unprofessional by all standards, but because it's modeling and it's fashion and you have children working in the business, it was just par for the course. I wish that I could tell my younger self at this age, if you feel uncomfortable or if alarm bells are ringing, say no and walk away. There will be more jobs. Oh, I love this picture. I love this picture so much. Uh, I mean, this picture needs no introduction. This is Martin Sheen and June Diane Raphael and myself on the set of Grace and Frankie. June and I play Martin's daughters on the show. And Martin is, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, not only an enormous talent, but one of the warmest, kindest, most playful people. He sings show tunes on set. I was in Haiti when I got this script. I didn't have cell phone, I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I couldn't read it, but I knew who was attached to it. 
And when I left Haiti, I got on a flight to fly to LA to audition for a show that I had not read because I knew it was gonna be great based on who was attached to it. And I think I was right. Oh, she's coming, she's coming! Oh God. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, God. I do. Oh, I can feel it, she's, she's... No, don't oh. push, do not push! Then do something! No, I'm telling her not to push! <laughs> oh my God, I think she's in my pants. What? Oh. A shared experience with all mothers is what is, who am I moving forward? And what is my life moving forward? And who am I to my kids? And I think that's something that I really have in common with Mallory is she's trying to figure out what is her identity as a woman and a mother? And how does that change now that she has four children? And I actually think I've done a really good job with this on the show, like really savoring these moments and like looking around and looking who you're working with and taking in everything you can. I think being in it, it feels momentous to, to be around all these people who are incredible incredibly storied and influential and fascinating and powerful as we sort of wrap up our last season when we go back to work. I really want to focus on savoring those moments because when it's all over, I think I'll look back on what a rare, beautiful experience it all was. Uh, this is very me now but like a prettier version, cause like I did my hair, like I did today, you know, they doing the hair thing is rare these days. But this is a very sort of like all moms in 2020, 2021 photograph because there's just a mess around me. My kids have taped things to the walls. They've drawn on the pillows. There are markers and instruments and laundry and all sorts of things that have yet to be picked up. But I'm taking a moment for myself there are so many things that are out of our control right now. So many things. I don't know, my work was shut down because of COVID. I don't know when I'm going back to work. I don't know when my kids are going back to school. I don't know when I'll see my parents again. That I think when you can control one thing that just makes you feel happy, it's so important to hold on to that. And if that is cooking that one recipe in the morning that makes you feel good, if that is taking five minutes to meditate or work out, if that is plugging in a Febreze plugin and making your house smell nice so that you can fool yourself into thinking you've created a better home than you have, you hold on to whatever you can to control the little things.